In this segment, we're going to talk about how to smooth n-gram language models. So the reason we might need smoothing is that when we build n-gram LMs, we are basically counting uh, word counts in a large corpus. And so when we have like a 2-gram or a 3-gram model, this can work fine. We can usually see most of the triples of words that make a lot of sense, especially if we have enough data. Uh, but actually, 5-gram models are more kind of in the range of n that we want. Uh, these actually can work pretty well. And to just kind of illustrate this, if we think about the distribution of words after two, um, so this would be this would be a two gram model um, versus the distribution of, of words after uh, go to versus the distribution of words after uh, want to go to. or after hate to go to, then uh, we can see that the distribution of words based on wanting or hating to go somewhere uh, is probably going to be very different. Um, maybe we hate to go to class, um, but we want to go to Austin. And so, having this additional context is generally going to be very useful for these models. So we're going to see that recurrent neural networks allow us to get this in one fashion. But before people were using recurrent neural networks heavily for this task, there is this trade-off between how many words of context you used and how difficult it was to estimate your parameters. So this is what smoothing uh, is supposed to do. So suppose that we have the probability of Austin given two. Um, you know, we're, we is assuming we have a big enough data set that contains the word Austin. Um, we're probably going to see it in some construction of two Austin, and so this is going to be greater than zero because it's seen in in the data. Um, but this only holds for a two gram model. If we think about the probability of Austin given want to go to, a lot of times this is going to be zero uh, if the corpus isn't huge. And even if you do have a huge corpus, uh, you know, are you necessarily going to see want to go to, hate to go to, like to go to, et cetera, every combination of it with like every place? No, you're not. So the reason for that is just because we don't see, uh, we don't see this 5 gram want to go to Austin occur with non-zero count. So this is going to be the idea behind smoothing. So there are many techniques for figuring out how to reserve some probability mass and basically a, like give a small amount of probability to these unseen instances so we can uh, you know, not judge them as totally impossible if they come along in future data. So the scheme that we're going to talk about is called absolute discounting. And I'm just going to give you the high-level picture of what's going on here so you understand what this family of techniques looks like. The idea is that we reserve mass from seen 5 grams to allocate to unseen 5 grams. All right, and so concretely what this means is if we have P of Austin given want to go to, it's defined in the following way. Uh, I'm going to abbreviate this. So this is the count of want to go to Austin over the count of want to go to. So this is just the maximum likelihood estimate of the parameters here, give, given the counts drawn from a big corpus. So what we are going to change here is we are going to subtract a constant k. And we're just going to say that 0 is less than k is less than 1 here. And then we're going to add lambda. So 
I'm going to write this as PAD um, to indicate that this is this absolute discounting distribution plus lambda times PAD of Austin given to go to. All right. So lambda here is set to make this normalize. So let me show you an example of this. So if we have the context want to go to, maybe we observe this four times in our data. And we see want to go to uh, Maui twice. We see want to go to class once and want to go to campus once. We're very studious here. So what we do is if k equals 0.2, then we are sub essentially think of it as subtracting off from each of these counts. And so our kind of denominator here, the count of want to go to, is four, right? We've seen it four times <clears throat> with, uh, you know, with these three unique contexts. And so lambda here ends up being 0.6 over four. It's the number of word types seen in this context uh, times k. That's what the that's what the numerator here is, and the denominator is just the count of uh, count of want to go to. And so what this has allowed us to do is it says, all right, I, we have these four occurrences, right? But instead of saying we have a 50% chance of Maui, 25% chance of class, 25% chance of campus, instead we've decreased all these counts a bit. We've, we've turned this down to, you know, whatever 1.8 over 4 is, chance of Maui, 0.8 over 4 chance of class, 0.8 over 4 chance of campus. And now we have this 0.6 over 4 times a lower order model. So this up here is the three gram, uh, actually, sorry, four gram absolute discounting probabilities for uh, Austin in now a shorter context. So the nice thing about this is that we can do this recursively. So then uh, PAD of Austin given to go to uh, is you know, basically a big expression, uh, the, the sort of count expression before, plus I'm going to call it lambda prime times PAD of Austin given go to. And if you keep, if you keep like unrolling this, uh, eventually you just get uh, the probability of Austin at the very end. And then this is all, this is always going to be greater than zero if Austin is a word that's shown up in our data, but likely we're only placing a distribution over words that we actually have seen. So the, the key property of this is that it allows us to basically allocate some probability mass to unseen events. And it backs off in this very natural way where we, we first kind of say, okay, we're not just going to like uh, throw out all the information, we're going to successively decrease the amount of information that we're looking at and uh, get a sort of accurate estimate as a result. So one of the techniques you may see in the literature is what's called knazer nye smoothing. Uh, knazer nye smoothing is very similar to absolute discounting. There's one kind of extra trick that they use where these lower order uh, these lower order probability distributions depend on essentially the number of unique words seen in a particular context because the assumption is when you're seeing a new word, what matters is what's called the fertility of the context, how many unique things can come after it. So go to would be a very fertile context because lots of things can come after it. So they, they kind of adjust the probabilities in one additional way, but uh, if you ever do any kind of n-gram language modeling, it's probably going to be uh, with Knazer-Nye, which uses roughly this framework.
So this is not something we're gonna be exploring too much more in the rest of the course, but this gives you an idea of what kind of techniques get used here in order to let you estimate these language models. And that's the end of this segment.